emotions that come of realizing the truth are overwhelming. Now prepare to be captivated in these cases the pursuit of fatherhood where every revelation brings a whirlwind of reactions. In a case where a man learns he may not be the biological father of his son, these are cases of you are not the father reactions on paternity court. Mr. Jacobs, you're on the birth certificate and paying child support for three-year-old Samara. Now, Ms. Call, you admit to allowing Mr. Jacobs to name the baby, sign the birth certificate, and pay support for your son, but now say Samara's real biological father is another man, Mr. Daniel Cooper. Yes, Your Honor. But Mr. Cooper says there's no way he's your son's father. Yes, Your Honor. All right, so Mr. Jacobs, how did you meet Miss Call. Well, Your Honor, I met, you know, being a gentleman that I am, I, I like to get to know her, I get to know her, I cook her a meal and everything like that. And, and This is after you met on the train? Yes. The same day? <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Mr. Jacobs been paying child support for his kid he believed was his and suddenly learns he may not be the baby daddy. So he's in court for paternity checking. Now, Miss Call admits to making him sign child support, but out of the blue tells him another man may be the father. You followed him home, Miss Call? We watched movies, we talked, we did get to know each other. We did have unprotected sex that night, Your Honor. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> That's not funny. Now we've got a little person here. Um, I would say about a month or so, um, you know, coming back home the first time, and she was sitting with a friend, and, you know, she was, she was fat, and everything, she was big, she was, and, um, it was like, all right, you know, I'm pretty shocked by it. I asked, you know, would you like to go for a walk and everything like that? And that's when she had told me that she was pregnant and everything, so I... That's not true. At first, he denied the pregnancy, but she made it known to him that there's another person that could be the dad. Brother, why sign a birth certificate when there's a possibility the father could be some other dude? Now, he said he felt a connection with a baby immediately after he was born and believed that the baby was his. He'd also sign without Miss Call's consent. I text Ernest, because I was listening to a song by Usher, Confessions, yeah, and in the first like... verse of the song, <laughs> it says that she was pregnant and she was keeping it. I told him to go listen. Yes, Your Honor. I assumed that I was a father because, like I said, we had sex a lot. And, uh, <laughs> a lot. So, okay, I, I got mean, that. It, it, was, it was good, so, I mean... Why did you sign the birth certificate? At that moment, were you sure you were this child's biological father? Close, and when he opened your eye, opened his eyes, you felt like that was a sign. That was a sign, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Miss Call, did you know he was going to sign the birth certificate? Did you all discuss that? No, Your Honor. Now that he's a legal father, he's been paying child support ever since. Now, subsequently, she revealed that she's certain that Mr. Cooper is the father. After he signed the birth certificate, paying child support, he's responsible legally for this child. You're now saying. Your Honor, one of Dan Mr. Cooper's family members showed me a picture of Mr. Cooper when he was three-year-old. My son is three-year-old now. He has his same yeah. eyes, same nose, same forehead, for same ears. He looks nothing like Mr. Jacobs. And Mr. Cooper said he was indeed in a sexual relationship with her, but however, she disagrees strongly that he's not the father. It seems like he just doesn't want to be the baby daddy. You are no, your child Honor. father? No, Your Honor, not at all. Not at all. Because Miss Carl, she was real promiscuous. She was out there. She had a crazy reputation. So the whole pregnancy. I so when you that. said she was trying to hint, what was the hint? She was just like, I'm pregnant, and you know, like she was getting a little bigger. But I'm like, man, that ain't mine. You doing whatever you do. Like you come over at night and leave in the morning. So. So she says she's convinced, though. She says the baby looks just like you, and your family member showed her a picture of when you was three years old. Mr. Jacob really wants to be the father, and he showed evidence of how he pays the child support monthly. I mean, it's not right except the money when you want another man to be the baby dad. Sign the birth I... certificate. Right. When your mother told you don't do it, you did it anyway. I did. And you're now paying child support. Correct. I mean, and I you have... say you your thought Honor, there was that's a why connection. He doesn't want to be... Ms. Call, you're allowing Mr. Jacobs to pay the child support, even though you say that Mr. Cooper is the child's father. Well, no, no, no. My point no, is. I know. No, look, look. Trust me. You accept the child support, but you want Mr. Cooper to be the child's father, and he's acting like he doesn't want anything to do with the baby. Well, we already know what that result's gonna be, so let's see how he handles it. Pertaining to whether Mr. Cooper or Mr. Jacobs is the father of three-year-old Samar Jacobs, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Cooper are not the father. <laughs>
Ooh. Mr. Pardon? Jacobs, you are not the father. <laughs> what the? Oh, hold up. Wait a minute. Calm down. Whoa. Review that. You say what? <laughs> Miss Whoa. You don't seem that surprised. <laughs> Mr. Jones and his mom petitioned the court for paternity tests to prove that he's not the biological father of the defendant's son. He also stated that he accommodated her and her kids and now is suing her for household expenses. She admits to cheating, but is pretty certain that he's the baby dad. Mr. Jones, you and your mother are co-plaintiffs who have brought the defendant, Ms. Milan, to court to prove her three-month-old son, Quinnell Jr., is not your biological child. Yes, Your Honor. The biological father of baby Quinnell Jr. Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Jones, why do you feel Quinnell Jr. is not your son's child. Well, Your Honor, I contacted the court three days after the baby was born because I watched my son break down at the hospital. When I first, you know, moved home with my mom, I noticed him. She was like, you know, this Mr. Jones, he lived next door. We started, you know, just on a friendly note, you know, hey, how you doing? We'll sit down, we'll talk, laugh, joke. I'll go back in, tend to my kid. And they started off as friends and he had feelings for her, but at that time, she was with her ex. Now, one thing led to another, which finally made his mom accommodate her and her other six kids. Eventually did have sexual relations. I didn't take it, you know, serious at the time I was with, but eventually I seen how I was feeling about Mr. Jones. Even after we had sex or whatever, he was like... So, Mr. Jones, you thought this was just, uh, what? I feel like once I approached her, you know what I'm saying, I tried to make her my lady. And they did? Yes. Yeah. When they, came, when they came and stayed with me and my mom, me and my mom, we was then in a, in a, a relationship. relationship. Yeah. When they came and stayed. Right. And your son was living there with Ms. Mylan and the children yes. at first? Yes. Now, he was getting tired, suffocated, and frustrated of living with his mom, Ms. Mylan, and her kids, and his little sisters. So he left the house to go stay with his ex. Now, the dad's mom had pertaining to the pregnancy was because she felt like she wanted to trap her son and have him in her life. Kids moved him into your mother's house and then went with your ex. Yes, pretty much. That's what <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, Your Honor. Like you said, I'm young. It's a big age difference. I started getting a little... I got frustrated. I ain't gonna lie. It started to get to me. Come come morning, I have to go to work. Hey, she's trying to trap your son. I felt like she was trying to trap my son because she stopped taking her birth control. Is that true, Ms. Mylan? No, Why did you I stop didn't. taking I birth stopped. control? I was sick. It, it was just making me sick. More so, she said that she told him that the baby could be his or her ex's. Now, he was, however, there during the times of the pregnancy and actually stepped up. But the doubts played out when his mom claimed to have seen her with another man, and it was also revealed that Mr. Jones was in fart. Three and a half weeks pregnant. I was like, by who? You know what I'm saying? She, she said, it's a possibility it's your. I know that. You know what I'm saying? Then she was like, I had sex with my ex or whatever like that, so. Use him. Did you use them, Mr. Jones? No. No. See, you should. Sometimes. This guy come knocking on the door looking for her, and I'm like, okay, you on the wrong side. See, I had my doubts because, no, the doctor told me I wouldn't be able to have kids. And then you being told, Mr. Jones, that you were sterile and wouldn't be able to have children, that's a lot of doubt for you. She desperately doesn't want the father to be her ex because of how Mr. Jones has stepped up. Now, he's already built a bond with her kids and hopes that the baby's his regardless and is willing to step up. Praying, like, when I first found out, and I was like, God, please don't let this be, you know, my ex. Child, even to the point where I was like, I'm gonna give it up for adoption if I could just know off the muscle that it was his, you know? But I always... I, your I always... last name, because he didn't sign the birth certificate. Yeah. And we're gonna... We're gonna we, I, I will continue to do that. I just want my son to be sure that this is his child. So they used to watch me play ball. You no, know, I used to teach them how to play ball and stuff like this. So I feel he like was, they was there before he was a her. Good male role model. The situation has put both parties on the edge of their seat, and it's only right to know the truth about paternity. It has been determined by this court, Mr. Jones, you are not the father. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah, I'm like... A man seeking answers concerning the paternity of his son after it was revealed that he may not be the biological father. Now, he hopes it proves otherwise. Now, Miss Stewart admits having cheated and is positive the kid isn't his and wants the alleged man to be the dad. Mr. Brown, just two and a half months ago, it was revealed today you've dragged Ms. Stewart to court to prove that you 
are Colby's father because you fear if you are not, you will lose him for good. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Stewart, you admit you kept the secret from Mr. Brown but claim the truth is the truth to prove that the other man is the father. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Brown already has custody of the child, but she wanted her child back, so she pulled up to his house with the cops, and it was then she revealed that he's not the biological father and claims he doesn't look like him but the alleged man instead. If it's not my kid, why didn't you come that day with the cops? So what happened when she brought the police to your house? You know, at, by that time, I'd already talked to one district attorney and three police officers who told me the same thing that I already knew. The cop that she brought was probably the only one on the force she could get to side with her. And he came and told me it was in my best judgment I gave the child back. And I asked him if it was in, you know, my best judgment or if by law I had to because there was nothing he could do. You were trying to take my son away from me, and that's what you did, exactly. Rip my son from my life. Ms. Teske, his girlfriend, shows up as a witness to testify how great of a father he was. And she also states that she knew the alleged father, that he doesn't even believe that he is the biological father. And I know that he loves Colby with all his heart. He takes very good care of him. He, he's the best father in the world to that little boy, and I know this is going to devastate him completely if that's not his son. And I know the other gentleman that is supposedly the father. I've known him for a couple of years, actually, and I've actually talked to him, so I do know that they have slept together because he did admit that to me. He didn't tell me around the time frame or anything like that, but he did admit it. And he did the born. other guy think he was the father? No. Mr. Brown pursues this case because he doesn't want to lose his son, not mind of what's at stake. The attachment with his son was pretty dear to him. Now, she says he restricted her from having quality time with her, and she's hurt. Okay. That I understand. You just want... You want the truth. Yes, Your Honor. And but, Your Honor, she has the right to come see me anytime. There's open-door policy in my But house. it's so sad that you don't let me have a one-on-one -on -one with my son. No, because You don't let me take told. my son for a weekend. Every mom should have every right. Now, the severity of this case has produced a pretty tense atmosphere, and it's only going to be taken away with the outcome of the results. So let's see who that baby daddy is. Mr. Brown, you are not the father. Oh I told you. I told you. All right. Let's take a dive into these cringe-inducing moments on paternity court that'll leave viewers on the edge of their seats. Now, a man refuses to believe that he's the biological father after finding a sex tape involving his wife with another dude. These are the cringiest moments on paternity court. Kenny, you are here to prove to your husband that he fathered. You testify that his paternity denial is tearing you apart. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Brown, you say there is no way you are a Myra's biological father. After finding a sex tape, we'll meet that man in a moment. But first, Ms. McKinney. Both parties open their case to determine the paternity of Havye. Now, Mr. Kendrick believes that he's the biological father, but she doesn't want him to be the father, but she wants his cousin to be instead. Now, the doubt of paternity comes into question after being sexually involved with three men. Mr. Pitchford Kendricks, you opened your case to prove you claim she is denying paternity only because she wants to be with another man and needs him to be the father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Savidra, you admit you allowed two men in to your bed at the same time, biological father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Pitchford Kendricks, you say proving paternity. Now, Mr. Kendrick doesn't want the baby to grow up without a dad. Now, their decision to spice things up have led them to a dead end. Now, she reveals that she slept with him and his cousin at a go. Like, being in school and seeing all my classmates and stuff, having their parents come up there, both of them. I can't let my kids grow up like that. And so you intend to break that cycle today? Yes, Your Honor. But, Miss Savidra, you say, unfortunately, Mr. Kendricks, you don't believe he's the biological father? No, Your Honor, I do not. It started like this. Man. And he came over one day. We did end up hitting it off, and we was cool. Um, ended up having sex. Now, aside from being involved with him, he's also been sexually intimate with her when his cousin wasn't around. The threesome was what they did regularly. 
system. So you're saying you did the threesome, but then you also would go over and sleep with her by yourself. Maurice was out with a friend of mine at a hotel. I called him, asked him if he would take me up to the hotel to see if we ended up going back to the house. The whole time we on the ho or on the way to the house, I'm thinking to myself, like That's when the unprotected happened. I was uh, trying I honestly I'm blown away. <laughs> The birth certificate of the baby doesn't include both fathers. Definitely, this has created some room for paternity questions. Now, a statement by his cousin submitted to court says that Javier looks more like Mr. Kendrick. Now, it's a little wonder that Mr. Kendrick was so confident. There's no, nobody on the birth certificate then. Because Maurice, because he's my only son and I wanted him with my last name. So why when I asked you, was it a possibility that uh, it's Javier or mine, you said- No, I don't, when you, you a lie. The baby. You was a lie. We have a statement from Maurice. your cousin, Maurice. Johnner, he even thought I was It says, since the dirty mess has come to light, I don't think her son is mine. He looks like Greg. Now, hoping for the best for her baby, she so desperately wants to start something like a family with Mr. Kendrick's cousin. But his messy situation she's created for herself was a stumbling block. You wanted that family you didn't have. And, and look, women do that. You acted like you were gung-ho to do something, and then when you did it, you really, your truth was is, that's not my thing. Right. And do you see how you walk down this road? His cousin is here with a basket saying, your baby is his. Will she allow Mr. Kendrick to step up if he's proven that he's the biological father? I don't know, man. Let's find out how this unfolds. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Pitchford Kendricks, you are not the father. Ms. Bosley petitioned the court for paternity because her son claimed that he didn't father the child as they could be two potential dads. Now, Ms. Jackson admits to being involved with two other men, but is certain that he's the father. Bosley, you and your son have petitioned the court for a DNA test because you are certain and there are two other possible fathers. You say your son made a young and dumb mistake by signing the birth certificate, and you need today's paternity result to get his name off of it. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Jackson, you admit to that Mr. Bosley is Maverick's biological father. Is that correct? Now, his mom felt that he made a mistake by signing the kid's birth certificate. Now, they were co-workers who'd fallen in love, but it turned out to be a complicated mess when she got pregnant. You meet and you almost immediately start a sexual relation. Correct. At first, I didn't believe it because I heard it once before. They make it sound like they want to have a family. Mm-hmm. Yes, Your Honor. But they saying it to everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, you do sleep with him. Yes, the cheating. I made my mistake of that two weeks of me not of me not knowing if this is real or not. The situation got ugly after realizing that she was also sexually involved with two other co-workers, and this raises the paternity questions. Look, this is what happens when you blur that line between boundaries between work and personal affairs. <laughs> The two guys she cheated on me with, those was the guys that we worked together with. Oh, so all of you all co-workers? Yes, we all was co-workers. With one other person that was there at the at the job. And that was the person that came to the house. The other person that I didn't have or sex or This sex. is a mess. This yeah. is a mess. Yeah. How many, how many people you gonna sleep with at the same job? When are you working? And clearly. This situation here, nobody knows anything. All they know is that they were just sleeping. Now, he's also found some sexual chats involving the other potential father. And this makes the situation worse, as it gives him more reasons to deny the baby. Now, the baby looks like the man in question, and that's a lot to take in. I had seen the dude, and I, I said, he looked, whoa, he looked just like. And immediately, just in all honesty, I was like, that's not your son. Immediately, because this made me think twice. That's what Ms. Jackson says. He responds, blank, you can come this way, babe. And then Ms. Jackson responds, blank, hell yeah. This other man is Maverick's biological father. So the guy in question is also in court and he's in denial. And he's pretty sure that he ain't the biological father. Now she hopes that he steps up to his responsibilities if it turns out that he is the father. You. Yes, Jana, she was trying to have sex. So do you believe you are Maverick's biological father? No, I no, no, I don't. Maverick's 
There's Mr. Bosley as a baby. There's Maverick in the middle, and then Mr. Green as a baby. You know, it's, it's, it's a kid on the line, and no disrespect to you. That's why I called you up that day, you know. Mr. Bosley, do you hope Maverick is your son? Yeah, I do. Okay. If he, if he minds, then we can move on. But if he's not minds, I'm gone. It's as simple. Well, the consequences of her actions have brought her to this complicated situation. So it's only fair that she learns who the father is. It has been determined by this court. The biological father is Mr. Bosley. Miss McKinney's in court to prove to her husband that he indeed fathered her daughter. However, he's in denial because he had found a sex tape of her with another dude. McKinney, you are here to prove to your husband that he fathered your 11-month-old daughter, Amira, apart. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Brown, you say there is no way you are Amira's biological father. After finding a sex tape, he fathered Amira. We'll meet that man in a moment, but first, Ms. McKinney. Now, he claims the kid doesn't look like him, but looks like the man at the tape. Now, inasmuch as he hopes that he's the father, he can't seem to accept the baby because of the doubts. The pain of hearing that she was sexually active with the man for approximately 10 times was just a little devastating. More and more every day, I see Amira's face and his face, and it bothers me a lot. So how, how did you find this sex tape? And I seen the beginning of the video, and I didn't see what I liked, so I just disclosed it. I didn't watch the whole video. The video came up, or you went looking to see nah, what was in her was phone? I was scrolling through her pictures or whatever, and before they could even get to it, I grabbed the phone. I didn't like what I seen, and I disclosed it. Miss McKinney, how did you meet the other man? I met him on a dating website. We started talking online, and then I finally met him in person, and he came to my house. So how often were you sexually active with this man? 10 times. So the man that she was involved with admits to this, and she had told him that she was pregnant and didn't know who the dad was. Now, why would she tell him when she's confident that it was Mr. Brown's, or could there be any other possibility that it was this dude's? What did she tell you about her relationship status when you first met her? Well, when I first met Miss McKinley... He was there? Yes. So how did the sexual relationship start with Miss McKinney? Me and Miss McKinley been having it's sex... It's Miss McKinney. Oh, Miss McKinney. You say you're in a year-long affair... I'm, I met Miss McKinley the ending of... <laughs> I met her the ending of 2015, going to 2016. She stopped him from signing the birth certificate. Did she know he wasn't the father, but had kept it a secret? Because nothing justifies her actions of doing so if she vehemently claims that he's the father. You signed the birth certificate? No, I did not. I refused to let him sign it. Oh. I said no because Amari didn't look like me. That's why I said no. That too. Why did you refuse? Because since we're married and I get public assistance, they're going to try to hit him with child support. But you all were legally married. So why would he have to be on the hook for child support if you're legally married? I didn't want him to sign a birth certificate. The man denies the baby's actually his because he wasn't involved with her during the window of conception. Does his statement make Mr. Brown disregard his doubts or not? And that's why you're saying I can't be Mike. her biological. Well, then, Ms. McKinney, why, if Mr. Fowler does this math and say, this is why there's an issue, it could be this man or this man. You don't have the same calculation as Mr. Fowler? No. I believe that Mario Brown's the father of Amira. So why did you tell Mr. Fowler... And before he found... Well, why? I mean, if he, it's over with him and it's done, why? Well, with everything that was going on, he's always been there for the baby. It's only right that the truth is revealed. So let's find out who that baby daddy is. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Brown, you are not the father. <laughs> What's a relationship without trust? Now watch as paternity court unveils the raw emotions from fiery confrontations and heated outbursts in cases where a man doesn't know if he or his ex-best friend is the father of a two-year-old little girl. These are the rage moments on paternity court. A man claims he loves older women, and when he met the defendant, he thought that he'd found the woman of his dreams and was thrilled to find out that he was having his first kid with her. Unfortunately, those dreams were shattered when he discovered that she was screwing with his best friend and he could be the child's biological father. And that Jimmy admitted to her that she slept with Janine. 
Now his intention was for it to be a one night stand, but it wasn't and he ended up all up in that. Now the relationship was going good. He even went to the hospital with her throughout the pregnancy. But a week the dude crossed the line he wasn't supposed to cross. Now she believes that Mr. Baker is the father and she also states that she loves him as they got a history and she wants him to be a family. Like I stated to you previously, I don't went through two other experiences. So you truly don't know. And I you, don't know. And you've been hurt and... I'm just trying to protect myself. ...disappointed so many times. I, just, I, I want him back. I mean, I just want us to be a family again, no matter what. Mr. Dudley, do you feel... Got that picture. Yo, this chick needs to do a better job and get herself together for the sake of her kids. Like, being the life of the party at 43 with 12 kids ain't the way to go at all. Like, she keep that up, she gonna rupture an ovary or something, man. All right, let's find out who that baby daddy is. Mr. Dudley, you... A man from New Orleans, LA comes to court with his mom, certain that the only reason his ex-girlfriend claims that he's the father of her baby is because his dance career is about to take off. Now, she believes the only reason he's denying her son is because of his meddling mom. Not only does she want to establish paternity, she's suing for child rearing expenses in the sum of $3,840. That's because, because the, no ma'am. No, no ma I paid for everything because no he, didn't, he quit his job and in he, June of 2014, I asked him, when will he start to pay for something? And he said he will. I always July have, uh, 13, 2014, when it came, he didn't have anything in the hospital with nothing. I paid for everything. Well, because you I wanted to. I paid for everything. I you didn't have a job, so how are you going to pay for it? Because you want to. Okay, hold on. You, you didn't have a job. You don't have any money, so you don't know what I got. I got more than you. No, you don't. Listen to the judge, man. Let's get some order. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Do you have receipts? Yes, I do have that will substantiate stuff that I had bought for my child. Jerome, may I see those, please? So he brought evidence showing some of the clothes he bought for the kid. Now, she claimed to also have evidence proving that he only did that because she told him she was putting him on child support. Man, they both came prepared. This is evidence it. you... It is a tweet that, that he said, I wonder how many more receipts I'ma need. I mean, it was, it was me making a joke. Like, I have two kids. Like, who does that? Who keeps receipts? I don't keep receipts on my children. Like, I don't... You know what I'm saying? So what, you're being sarcastic had, in this right, tweet? Right, right. Yeah, I, I never... I never had to do that. Mr. Bailey, I want to understand your doubt because you say you're at the hospital. Mm -hmm. You went through the pregnancy with her. Yes, ma'am. You signed the birth certificate. Yes, ma'am. So when did you start doubting? When his mother started talking, Yana? I started doubting when she, like, when she, when I started seeing her actions, like, who does that? But I just so happened to go through her phone. She was texting me and this little dude just around the same time. Now, his mom believes that Miss Knox was pregnant when she met him, and that's because every time someone went over to the house, she was always under the covers, and that seemed a little suspicious. She also stated that when they had a conversation, she always said that she was three months pregnant, but that didn't add up to Miss Bailey, and she brought evidence to shed some more light on the situation. She met my son in October. Either way, whether it was November or December, it don't matter, little girl. It don't add up. So, at this point, I'm looking at her. Now, mind you, she never one time got out of the bed every time we go over there. She's always covered up. When I see her, she's like, Maybe in between here. So six you're saying more. she looked like she was five or six months pregnant when I, when when I she physically was saw her she when she was told me she was three months. Okay. Me even meeting her. Okay, I had you my can doubts. step back over to the point. When he came, and, you know, he was trying to get me to talk to the to the little girl. I said, I don't, I don't think so. It's just something about her that I don't like. From day one, I kept telling That's him. That's what I said, Yana. I, I don't. Now, we heard his mom and her doubts, but Mr. Bailey's doubts aren't quite clear yet. He claimed that she went as far as dealing with some of his friends as they always come back to tell him that his baby mama messed up. Now, on top of that crap, she was always threatening him to put him on child support. Then she doubles back a couple of days later saying that she wouldn't do that to him. Mr. Bailey. You... Our Cash's father. <laughs> That's fine. You still a crown. And you seem emotionless. How does That's it feel? I'm, I'm, that's my son. I'm going to uh, move forward with, you know, what I got to do as a father, and I'm not going to let her bring me down. I'm going to just keep doing what I'm doing, because I know the truth. You. As it relates to her suit, judgment for 3380 was made for the plaintiff, as Mr. Bailey is, in fact, the father, and he's got a legal responsibility to help take care of that baby. 
A veteran claims that she's outraged because her husband accused her of infidelity while she was serving in Iraq. Furthermore, she claims he now doubts paternity of her kid. Now he contends that there ain't no way he could be the dad cause she announced she was pregnant way too soon after coming back. I mean look man, military girls are straight horny when they get back from deployment. And you're gonna see guys, but that doesn't mean that you have to cheat and you have to go outside of your marriage. So um, you admit that there is temptation. There's temptation all around, but I, I didn't cheat and I didn't go outside of my marriage and I know that in the military there's a rule. I insured him over and over plenty of times. So you're saying you really tried your best to stay in contact with your husband and to let him know you were being faithful despite the challenges, the danger you were facing overseas. Yes, I did, Your Honor. Mr. Murray, so what is it made you so doubtful about your wife's time overseas? Well, she went overseas the day after Valentine's Day. Uh, my birthday is on the... What made it scary for me, the first time me being alone in another state with no family. Keep in mind, I'm 22 years older than my wife. So that has a lot to do with it, uh, my being guilty or bad conscience. All right, so that wasn't it. The dude had even more reasons. Now, he explained that while he was in the apartment complex, which consisted of 85% military people either active or not, there was a young dude that had told him something that made him start to work. Now, he told him that in the military world, when they're overseas, they got a group of people, and that group has to stay with each other. This is the only group of people you're going to see for two years. He said, yeah, there's married, married people. He said it could be 40 married ladies on base. And that's not true. That's not true. Well, this is what he said. It could be 40 married ladies on base. And he says every last one of them ladies would have sex with another man because on the base is what happened on this base stays on this base. So picture it, me, she's over there, and I'm getting told this. Yeah. And that heightened your concern. Of course. Now, this witness joined the court anonymously. Now, before he started his testimony, he stated that he wasn't going to bring any discredit upon the military because the actions of soldiers don't reflect the military. Well, that disclaimer was needed. There are a lot of times where you join the military and you're away from home. And so the first thing you can do is cling to people. And, and we will go on what they call TDY, which is temporary duty. You know, the unofficial um, term for it was temporarily divorced. Ms. Brown Murray. Baby, let me back that up. When I picked her up in November, we was riding around in the car. I'm asking her, I thought it was kind of odd. She's sitting on the couch. She had bought me some Jordans and I'm wearing my Jordans. She's talking to him. I heard her tell him, he's not stupid. <laughs> he's not stupid. And you know, well, she ain't talking to her mother like that. She ain't talking to her sister like, who are you talking to? And she said his name. According to the witness, it's common for veterans to return home to continue a relationship or friendship with some of their fellow servicemen, even if they're members of the opposite gender and are married. Because most of the time when they go to work, their wives, husbands, and families aren't there. So whenever they see each other at work, they find whatever they can do or places they can go and still continue. And one thing, when you meet civilians, they see someone in the uniform, and when you see them in the uniform, you know, they're attracted to us. Exactly. Money. And so, Mr. Murray, as you listen to your witness, their relationships, and don't necessarily engage in this type of activity. So, yeah. I'd like to thank your witness. Thank you, sir, for your testimony. And then you have a beautiful daughter, and he doubts whether or not it's his child. It's exciting to be able to come home, but doubt, with the doubt, trying to meet somebody and have a relationship, you're out there fighting and trying to protect the country. He plays with her, he takes care of her when I'm at work, so even with the doubt, he's still a good father, he still takes care of her. Now, when she got home, the dynamics of their sexual relationship changed. He was always told by a doctor years ago when he had an unusual male discharge that his sperm cells were weak. Now, considering that she'd gone through a pretty traumatic time, he never scolded or gave an attitude. Until one night, she woke him up to tell him she was pregnant. She then showed him a pregnancy test. It has been determined by this court that you are her father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think my knee. Thank you. What's more heartbreaking than going to jail for something you weren't even aware of? Watch as paternity court unravels the stories of fathers who ended up behind bars, leaving a trail of broken relationships and shattered lives. These are the fathers that went to jail on paternity court.
Mr. Lapine, you say you've spent years in jail for unpaid child support and your life has been turned upside down. Yes, Your Honor. Tomorrow you have yet another court date. Yes, Your Honor. You claim you could be locked up again if today's results prove you are indeed Miss Lapine's biological father. A woman claims for the past 30 years she's always believed the defendant was her father until she was told months ago by a family member that he's not her biological father. We was at a family dinner and we was all just discussing how our parents was and I went to another family member and asked if this was true and they just told me that this was not the time or place to talk about it and just shrugged it off. So hold on, they gave you a name? Gave me a name. Of the man that was your father? Yes. He counted back the months and he realized he wasn't even with her mother around the time she was supposed to be pregnant. Things just weren't adding up. After he learned that her mom was pregnant, he went on to marry her and also signed the birth certificate and he stepped up to be the dad. Please be seated. Thank you for joining us. And your name? Jennifer Lapine. Mr. Lapine is your father. Yes. And you grew up believing? I mean, we were always teased about it, but... Who would tease you? It's just different family members. Uh, what would they say? And then it comes out and then you see it affect everybody. It's not just, and now all of a sudden it's like, you know, it may not be, but it's, it's What are it's you hard. holding it's in difficult. your hand? Brandy believed she got her mother's side of the genes, but her father's attitude. She admitted they don't look alike, but then again, your kids don't always look like you. Due to the fact that he thought she was his, he's been paying child support ever since. I would go to the courthouse and make them take it out of my paychecks all the time. They go back. Record 19... after record. And with a court date tomorrow, the stakes, they really can't be any higher because no, they could send you back to jail. Yes, ma'am. It's a vicious cycle at some point. If you lose your job or you get behind in your support, then you go to jail over and over again. But where was he when he wasn't in jail? Sadly, they're taking from his arrears, too. Now, Brandy stated that she's tried to find the man whose name she was given, but there are 239 people named Bill in every state in the United States. She wouldn't even know where to start her search from. Very soon, and I just want to know who my real dad is. And then I have to ask you this. When you hear about the man you believe to be your father, Mr. Lapine, your whole life facing jail time again tomorrow. Brothers and sisters, I feel like that you did more for them than you ever did for us. He wasn't there for me, but he was there for them. We can't make the past up. No, we can't. No, I we can't, but I can make the future then. better. Very well said. And They've got a great bond, and it's beautiful to know that they're willing to be there for each other. And it's time for the results. In the case of Lapine versus Lapine, when it comes to Jennifer Lapine, Mr. Richard Lapine, you are her father. In the case of Lapine versus Lapine, as it pertains to the paternity of, is not your biological father. Two young adults angrily confront the man whom they say walked away from them and their mother. But is he the father? He claimed that he's been taking care of the kids for over 19 years, and he's been to jail because he owes $10,000 in child support papers, even with the fact that the kids aren't his. You all are married. No, ma'am. You're not married. Divorced. Divorced now. Yes, ma'am. So this is $16,198 in... I've uh, caught her cheating on me uh, numerous amount of times. Her and her friend was in the bathroom, and he had his pants down. That what? is a lie. What? Yes, Your Honor. That is a this lie. Is this you all were dating? Yes, Your Honor. Oh. You're saying that's not true? That's not true. So what's Mr. Redman is tape? lying. She claimed that she never cheated on him, but he had more evidence to prove her wrong. He had once gone to her workplace, and the people at the front had told him where to find her. When he got there, he caught her in bed with another man. He was so hurt that he couldn't confront her, so he got into his car and he left. What work was she doing in this room? She was a housekeeper. Oh, you were a housekeeper, Miss Patterson? Yes, that's when we first met. I was a housekeeper, Your Honor. And so, have you, have you had? I don't know what he's talking about. So, Mr. Redmond, you really believe sh she cheated. All of these inst instances add up to you in your mind that she cheated. Yes, Your Honor, I have one more incident, if you mind me telling you. Yes, okay, uh... you can step back to the podium now. I'll hear it from over there. You'd think with all of this that they'd end the marriage. Well, surprisingly, they both managed to stay long enough to get pregnant again. He believes Keisha's not his child because he was so furious with Miss Patterson when they left her hometown. He claimed he slept on the couch, so he couldn't sleep in bed with her. I 
not true, Your Honor. That's not. The reason why he ain't sleeping in the bed, he was never at home. He'll come home when it's time for me to go to work. So how you gonna how you gonna sleep? How you gonna sleep in the bed and you too much in the streets? Because I didn't want to look in your face. You wouldn't work. You wasn't home. You your, was never home. Your Honor, I taught my young, my oldest daughter how to walk and party trained them. Your Honor, I was the one who fixed the formula because she didn't know how. So when did he really start denying the, the children? When I left him. Did you believe he doubts my children or were you thinking that you all were just a married couple having children? Yes, Your Honor. The sisters are in court. Although they've been told he's their father, LaQuandria considers Mr. Patterson their dad because he's been there for her her entire life, so she has no relationship whatsoever with Mr. Redmond. Keisha has the same opinion too when I was always taken to go to his mother's house because he didn't have a house. He's always in and out of my life. He's never done anything for me. And that hurts you. Has it hurt you growing up without a father? When we was homeless, we had nothing. But now, as I grew up, I started to know that he ain't nothing, nothing. His mom is too old to be raising a 40-year-old man. Well, do you hear them say that they don't believe you've been there for them? They don't feel your presence in their life. They don't feel your protection. First of all, Your Honor, the kids were kidnapped from me when they were in my custody. She came back and stole the kids from me. LaQuandria revealed that her mother was even the one that signed the birth certificate and that he paid child support one or two times, which amounted to nothing. With tears in her eyes, she told him how he hasn't done anything for them and how she had to get a second job just to help out. It's pretty sad. She's speaking to you, crying out to you, really. Where are you? Where were you? Your Honor. You didn't even look over there. You didn't even look her way. How is it you can't even look this young woman in the eye? I mean, this is... What is going on with you? I, I mean, she's so disrespectful, Your Honor. I had to put up with the, the total disrespect of this young lady for a long time, Your Honor. No, I do not, Your Honor. Everybody clap. Please. All right, you know what? I'm not gonna prolong this confusion because what I have is going to alleviate all of this mess because I they've been through so much hurt and pain and the only way to solve this is to get the results so let's check them out it has been determined by this court Mr. Redmond you are the father in the case of Redmond versus Patterson when it comes to LaQuandria Red has been determined by this court Mr. Redmond you are the father <laughs> a woman's desperate to determine the biological father of her four-year-old daughter. She confessed that one man signed her daughter's birth certificate, yet another man is paying child support. The defendant and his wife are furious that he spent two months in jail for $6,000 in delinquent support payments. Okay, so you guys met, and at some point you started a sexual relationship. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so you were in just a sexual relationship, or you all were boyfriend and girlfriend, a committed relationship, what was it? And it turned out positive. And so once you had a positive result, did you? Yes, he did. Oh, Jerome, let me see that. So this other man was with you through the pregnancy? Yes, he was. And he, he was, was there, there at the time. birth, too? That is not true. And I am not the only guy who should be tested anyway, because if you remember, I do li I live across the street from you, but you also had numerous of other guys going in and out to our house. When the police first came to his house, he thought he was getting arrested because of the traffic tickets, because that was what the police told him. But once he got to jail, they pulled up his record and told him he owed $600 back in child support. So I guess I owe, I guess I owe for over a couple of years or so, I guess. And, um... Jasmine is four. Yeah, she's four. So you got arrested. And then, um... <clears throat> and he also told me that it's a possibility I could not be the father. So, yeah, well, I wasn't there, but we were dating at the time. You were dating? Yes, but I never heard of her. Never heard of a Jasmine at all. I just... I'm tired of all Do this. Do you think he's the father? My honest opinion, I don't even know because she looked like him and she looks like the other guy. Mr. Harris hasn't developed any relationship with the child and he's seen her just once and that was when he was living in the state of Kentucky. She claimed the other guy had told her he would step up and take care of her, so she allowed him and made Mr. Harris pay child support. In the case of Rochelle V. Harris, as it pertains to four-year-old Jasmine Owens, Mr. Harris, you are the father. The saddest thing about betrayal is that it comes from those that you love and trust the most. 
Now get ready to bear witness to the ultimate test of relationships and cases where a woman left a man and went back to her husband while he was in the hospital fighting for his life. These are the worst betrayals on paternity court. It's your honor. Miss Forrest, you and your husband are here today desperate to put an end to this drama. You say you have no doubt your daughter's biological father is indeed your husband. After two years of waiting, the day's finally here. He claims that the defendant left him for dead only to find out once he was out of a coma that she was pregnant and the baby could be his or her husband's. That's definitely a lot to take in after coming out of a coma. I had got a phone call saying that she was pregnant. I heard it from my aunt first, but oh. on my way to Illinois with my dad, she had called me and told me that it was a possibility that Elena was my child. She told you a possibility? Yes, ma'am. So that means she was admitting that she also had slept with other people? Yes, ma'am. Did you think the other person was just her husband? At the time, no, Your Honor. You thought there were other possible? Yes, Your Honor. No. And you why would you think that? Why would you have reason to think that? Because she was working at the time, and some of her check would be coming up missing every time she would get paid. No. And so no. what did you suspect? Because something was missing out of her check? She would get off at 10 o'clock. It would take at least 15 minutes to get home, but she would come in at 11 to 11 It took about 45 minutes to get from where so I was working. So it was missing time and missing money. Yes, Where she was MIA. Yes, now, from, All where right. she, from where she worked at, and I know for a fact, it took 45 minutes to get from her work and at the no, to Your Honor, the house. That's a lie. And at the time, while he was in bed on life support, she reconciled with her husband. She claimed that she had tried to see him, but his mother didn't let her. Well, there was definitely some feelings involved. I mean, she'd gotten back with her husband while he was fighting for his life. I loved Mr. Webb at the time, but we were... You loved him? Well, I mean... I... Yeah. So when you My realized you were pregnant... When, when exactly did you realize you were pregnant? The middle of September. That is a lot, right. Your Honor. Because I didn't know at the time I was pregnant. So, Mr. Webb, how did you find out she was pregnant? She had called me the day that I got out of the hospital. I was on my way to Illinois with my dad. I got a phone call. We had a discussion. She said that I may be the father, but then again, I may not be because she was back with Mr. Forrest. I was there with her at the doctor's office, so it was the middle of September when she found out. It was in August whenever she found out that she no. was pregnant. No, it was not. So there's not a true. month discrepancy. You say September, you say August. Yes, Your Honor. So when you got the news, did you immediately think you're the father? Well, she had told me ahead of time that I may not be the father. There was a chance that I was the father. So now, what makes you stand in court today, Miss Forrest, and say that your husband is definitely the father? I have counted back the times from when she was born, nine months back, and it takes it to the week that I was only sleeping with him. Me and Mr. Webb are already over with. With this close proximity, I'm surprised she's sure who the father is. In her defense, the kid looks just like her husband, and she takes after him, but looks don't always do it. The difference in time is also all a part of the same window of conception. Why wasn't he there for her? The reason <coughs> I have not been there, Your Honor, I had got an email on Facebook from my aunt that Miss Forrest had had Elena. So you got news that the baby was born. You didn't hear from Miss Forrest herself. No, Your no, Honor, I, not at you, first. You heard through your family. Yes, Your Honor. I, I messaged his mother on Facebook and told her what hospital I was going to be at, where, where I was going to be, when I was going to the hospital, and everything. Him or his family, knew, nobody showed nobody up. Showed so, up. question: no. You me you messaged him, I messaged his on mother. Facebook, his family, to let them know. But why do that if you know for certain that Mr. Forrest, your husband, is the child's father? Just in case that he did come uh. back being the father, he could say that. He wasn't there for the birth. He oh, wasn't okay. there. I so had the a difficult truth labor. Is, even you had doubt. At first in my pregnancy, yes, yes, Your Honor. Now, just when you think you heard it all, it appears that she's afraid that if he gets to see the child, he might run off with her, and there's nothing she can do to get her back. Well, that's the issue right there. She admits that she's been blocking him from seeing her and not the other way around. If you informed his family because you believed it was a possibility he could be the father, he proved, why wouldn't you give an him an opportunity to see the baby? He proved he didn't care about not he wants there. it. When, when she told him, he told her he did not care. Well, I so therefore, said that you're he ain't there for I two years. I have been in tears for the last two years trying to meet my daughter, and she has never let me once when talk I to her him, or see her. When I talked I to him, I told him I was pregnant. A 
fake Facebook account just to see pictures of Elena. I can't get past why you would not just allow him to see her if you thought it was a possibility that he could be her They have all been out for there two his years. Time. He's never wanted to meet any. He wants me to come 45 minutes from where I live to his mother's house. I'm not comfortable going alone with my daughter to his house. For 45 house. minutes? You're not comfortable going with you to see? Not alone, and he's always wanted me to come to his mother's house. No, Your Honor, I have planned to meet her in Dyersburg, Tennessee, which is a big big town just so I could meet Elena out in public. In his case, he was even putting in the effort, even with the fact that he wasn't sure he was the father. With tears in his eyes, he stated that he's really hurt because he feels like he's missed out on two years. Mr. Forrest really needs to take it easy. He made it clear that he still wouldn't be allowed to see her until the DNA test results were out. It has been determined by this court that her biological father is Mr. Webb. A man discovers his former lover is pregnant on social media, but she doesn't lead him to believe that he's a potential father until after she gives birth. He claimed that she threatened to put him on child support, so he wants to prove that he's not the father before she can try. She know that baby ain't mine. That's like she just called me last night talking about some would you be mad if he wasn't yours. Oh. Oh, that's a lie, though. That's a lie. I never said any of that. Okay, let <laughs> me try to translate this. When you were on the phone, she was trying to give you the one up that it may not be yours. This one up that she should have gave me from the day he was born. Not now. So take me back. Before we get to that point, how did you all even meet? It was just we were out, shoes with her people. I was with mine. It's like we just linked. I seen him some years later. I got a reputation for being loose. Come on now, ain't nobody got time for this. Okay, but you didn't even know me though, so how would you know? Right. I know you. You don't know me. Okay. So wait a minute, what you're around. saying is, is you had mutual friends. That's how you met? Yes. And then it turned into a sexual relationship between the two of you. Y yes, but we only, we only had sex three or four times together, that's it. And he told me while we were having sex that he wanted me to have his baby. Uh, I'm gonna stop you right there. Your Honor, she's a lie. He was scrolling on social media, and he saw a picture of her pregnant, which he liked. She didn't say anything to him. He finally heard that the child could potentially be his when he was born. He was at his house when he got a call from his mother saying some girl was at her house with a baby. I'm still a baby. What you mean, baby? That's how I feel. I'm like, man, you got me messed up. I ain't got no kids. And that is the first time you've ever heard about Jaden. Your mom calls you and say, it's a girl over here with a baby. Man, get over here. I come over there, she gone. The baby laid in my mama's arm. My mama got attached to the baby. And just that quick? Just that quick. Now I'm in but a hard, now I'm in a hard spot stuck under a rock because my family done got attached to this baby. I don't know. I just can't drag him out their life like that. He's already in it. Wait, he just got dropped off. Right. <laughs> my point exactly. That's how quick she fell in love with the baby. She told she Miss Canterbury to leave the baby there with her. She knew from the start that he was Jaden's. She said that Jaden looked how like... How old was Jaden when you left the baby with his mom? Uh, he was probably that, like a month old. Man, that... Yes, right. Exactly. A month old. Exactly. But now he's two years old. Yeah, almost About three. About to be three. Almost three, yep. <laughs> now I speak, Your Honor. Please. Yes. I have something to say. You know this baby was my baby or you claim it to be my baby. If you had a baby and you thought a man was your potential baby father, wouldn't you let him know whether he is or he not? You would and say something and you would and let I him did. know oh, it's a potential you could be. He was so sure he wore a condom because according to him, he woke up with it on. Although he admitted to not using protection the third time, the whole timeline still doesn't lead to what ultimately is determined to be the window of conception. The conception window would have been between September 2nd and September 6th, and the most probable time of sex would be between August 30th and September 6th. Judge, so, I told you. so let's go even back to the, your calendar, Mr. Cooper. It's off. You just explained it. I couldn't say no. And way. you claimed during that particular sexual encounter, you wore a condom. I sure did the first two times. No. Nope. Not the third we time. Didn't not have, in October. We didn't have I did. I'm not gonna lie. I had, a few, I had a few drinks. You got caught slipping. Oh, more than I, a few. I, I was more than slipping. I was falling. I don't know what to say, Judge. She stated that this had happened in August, but August appears not to be on his exhibit, and she claims this is because he doesn't know what he's talking about. He doesn't believe it could be in August because that was when the child was born, but that he wasn't with her till September. Jaden was made in August. I ain't touched back down to Toledo to September. 
Do the math out of that. You just did it. You okay. It. You can say what you want, but I don't care. I really know the truth. So, All these people don't know the truth, but I know Ms. the truth. Miss Canterbury, I need to ask. So, obviously, Mr. Cooper has not been stepping up. Nope, not at all. Doing anything for nope. Jaden? Nope, nothing. Who's been Jaden's father My figure? boyfriend, Casey. So, your boyfriend has yes. had to step up and be a father figure to Jaden. Yes, he's... We've been together... <laughs> we've been together since before Jaden was one years old. So, he's been here. He's taken care of him financially. He's been here, taught him things. He's been the only father figure in his life. They're very close. Now, Your Honor, may I say something? Now, I just sat here and told you my mama got a touch to that baby, right? I just said that, right? So, you think I'm gonna disappoint my mama even though I feel that doubt? I'm not about to have my mama look at me because she ain't raised that type of man. Whether I do or I don't know, that's why we're here to find out the day which I need to find out. If he turns out not to be his, she believes he'll be fine without a father as he's got her. She admits she knows where the other potential father is, but sadly, he's not it too. Well, that's just sad, but at least we now know there's another possible father. Mr. Cooper, you The father. Like I said, like I said, like I said. Yeah. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. A man from Louisville, Kentucky, recently discovers that he might not be related to his father. He comes to paternity court for answers with his mom standing by his side. I get a call about three o'clock in the morning. My mama called and told me that uh the person she told me was my daddy and well, my father that this gentleman was and to go online and look him up. And this is what your mother tells you? Yes. What are you thinking? All kind of things. I mean, she was like, don't be mad at her or whatever. A lot of things ran through my mind. Like what? I thought it was a joke, actually. Honestly, I thought she was playing. Really? Yeah. Because that was so far outside of your realm of thinking. Yeah. And so, Ms. Cooper, what made you make that call at 3 a.m.? I mean, this has been building up in me, Yana, for a while. I mean, it's not like the first time either I tried to get in touch with Mr. Newby. I just had no way to get in touch with Mr. Newby. And it was, it's just been weighing on, on my heart and my mind. And it's something I thought my son deserved to know. So at three in the morning, you just said, this is it. Yes, yes, Your Honor. You kept the secret yes. for 34 years. Yes, Your Honor. When you made the call, did you think your son would be able to receive the news or you just felt like you couldn't hold it anymore? I mean, I really didn't know how Dante was gonna take it, but it was something I had to get off of my chest. At the time, it was only her friend that she had told. It was time to go back to school over the summer and she gained weight. Her mom was buying school clothes and she figured something wasn't right because she'd always been a small person, but she was going two sizes up. He was like, this is not right. I mean, and she asked me questions like, was I messing with little boys and everything? And I told her no, I mean, but she figured out that oh, I was pregnant too. And so when she said, were you messing with little boys? You said no, it comes out. What happens the day she finds out you're really pregnant? In my eighth month, she took me to the doctor and when I had my exam and he took, came back and he told my mom, yes, ma'am, she's pregnant and she's very, very pregnant. And you didn't go to the doctor and your parents didn't know until you were eight months pregnant. Yes, Your Honor. At that time, I'm sure she asked you who the father was. It was another, like, childhood friend that I went to a dance with and she just knew me and Mr. Newby to be just as friends, but this other guy I went to the dance with, she just assumed that he was the father and that's what she said it and that's what it was. I got a message on Messenger. I was friends on, with her on Facebook and I got my messenger popped up and they looked on there and it said, you're not gonna believe this, this is your child, real talk, and with a picture of Dante on it. And I said, what? And then I text her back and she didn't say nothing. I said, you can't drop a bombshell on me like that and don't elaborate. And I waited until she finally responded. And I said, does he know this? I said, because how could I be the father? I never seen you pregnant. When he got the message, he was stunned, so he kept asking her questions like how he could be the father since he never saw her pregnant. They'd always kissed and messed around with each other back in the day, even a family member of his was involved. They were basically young teens experimenting by sleeping with each other unprotected. So you're saying that there was also a sexual relationship between Miss Cooper and another family member of you? I don't we would call that though, Your Honor, but okay, if I don't remember that. So, Mr. Newby, you still feel in disbelief at this point. You see pictures of Mr. Cooper. Are you now curious? What do you do at this point? I mean, this is news 34 family, years I later. I my family members exactly that right there and asked them what did they think. And what did they say? Everybody said he looks like you. <laughs> 
It's interesting you all both have that toothpick sitting out the side <laughs> of your mouth. That's what I'm laughing at. Well, it's, it, well it, I say that because my father does that too with the toothpick and it just goes down the line. It's amazing, but a lot of men do that. But it, it, when you look at that picture, that's what makes you laugh, the way you're holding that toothpick. Yeah. She felt like she stole something from both of them, hence why it weighed so heavy and she couldn't hold it any longer. Oh, I would have loved my dad. I just, and now it's kind of hurt real bad. No, I understand. When I think about it. Mr. Cooper, when you hear Mr. Newby talk about the things he feels like you missed, what do you feel? I really don't know how to feel about the situation. I mean, I feel his pain, you know, me being a father, you know what I'm saying? I can relate to the Miss House situation by me not having a father, so it really don't, you know, I don't deal with this 34 years. Something I want to know, you know, for the sake of my kids, you know, and, you know, start from right now and move forward. Mr. Newby brought his oldest daughter to court as a witness, and she really doesn't know whether or not Mr. Cooper is her father's son. But seeing her father's pain hurts because they've been through so much with their family and he missed out. If he's determined to be her father's son, she stated that her family would be willing to accept him. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Newby, you are not the father. Welcome back, everybody, to some more drama on paternity court. So let's get going and kick this thing off. Okay, so check this out. Her best friend texted her boyfriend that he's not the father, and now a Michigan woman is in court to prove paternity and save her relationship. Save your family, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Osborne, you admit to being a father figure in Paisley's life, but say her biological father. Well, if there's allegations of cheating, it usually comes with a reason. It's really hard to make stuff up. Even in terms of having trust issues, there's usually a reason behind it. But in this case, there's a lot at stake. Both have this doubt in the back of our mind. We don't speak of it, but it's there. We know it. Um, and we were both, we just both had like a look of fear in our eyes. Like, what did we do? For a baby to scare people, you definitely know there's got to be a big problem. Babies are usually bundles of joy that sew relationships together, but in this case, it's brought them apart and dealt them with a big dose of confusion. Osborne? Yeah, Your Honor, because the day before she found out she was pregnant, I received text messages while I was at work from her best friend stating that she might be pregnant and that it's not mine. Aww, well isn't that a really good best friend that goes out there and leaks secrets because of their broken conscience. I mean, how can the best friend tell though? Isn't it all based on the time of conception? Guys, I thought I'd let you know. Also, she's been blank guy two out in blank and guy three. There are only a few reasons a best friend might tell secrets to her friend's boyfriend. One is to sabotage and the other is if it's the truth. That sort of information doesn't just come out of nowhere, but what does the plaintiff have to say about it? We're sleeping with. She did to me what I did to her. So it's out of spite. It's all out of spite. Oh, so you did this to her once upon a time. Once upon a time, something similar. Well, as I said, it could be sabotage and we're going to take her word for it. I mean, it is her testimony. But I can only imagine how the defendant felt in that instance. It must have been crushing. I guess the funny thing is, is that it might have been a joke to him until he found out she was pregnant. But with doubts as massive as that, he chose to stay. There is a chance that she is my child and I grew up without a dad and I, I didn't want her to grow up without a father. Okay, so he was at the birth and cut the cord and when he tried to settle his doubts, he asked for a DNA test. But apparently the hospital didn't offer a free DNA test anymore, so he decided to sign the birth certificate. Well, at least he didn't do it immediately. I embarrassed My you. My friends were in the did room. You, did you see the messages? I embarrassed you. I don't care. If it comes out that she's Why not did my you father. hold my leg? Why did you drive me to the hospital? Why were you there through the whole thing? Okay, so Judge Lake decides to invite the best friend to court to get to the bottom of the situation. Judge Lake asks her about it and she doesn't seem to back down. She tried to mess up my relationship and things in my personal life, so out of spite. I told her boyfriend at the time what she had been doing. So do you have any proof that she was sleeping with other men? Yes, she told me. As they always say, the truth will always prevail. The ex-best friend brought the evidence to court. 
messages from the plaintiff to her telling her about the people she's had sexual encounters with. She responds, yes, girl, I've been up all night. He's still sleeping. Another exchange between you and the plaintiff. It's if she still denies it, it shows that she has no decency. She should just tell the truth. Her excuse is that she had a lot going on at the time. I mean, get some shame. It's free. Sleep and go to another guy's house. I can say anything with I'm mad, when I'm mad. I can write anything over a Facebook. Oh, so now I, you're saying you're angry. I was probably angry at him, yes. That's so, I know that you slept with multiple people and attempted to sleep with a fourth. All right, so the best friend was even there with her when she was cheating with one man specifically, so she's kind of an addition to the problem. Every time she got a chance, she would go to one guy's house in particular, and if he didn't answer, there was another one. And then if he didn't answer, wow. there was one that I wow. helped or introduced her to, and then she would go to his house. All of those allegations, and she just blatantly denies them. Honestly, I don't know who to believe, the salty best friend or the alleged cheater. I can't do stuff with the light off. No, don't even, okay? I, I can actually do whatever I want. You did. Well, with all the back and forth of the cheating situation, they moved on to the conception dates to try to figure out a link between the dates and the messages. Window of conception would be May 13th to May 19th. It was May 17th. 2017 when you sent the messages what she hasn't figured out is that even though he has doubts choosing to stay when there's a chance he's the father is the best decision for all of them and that would have taken a lot of sacrifice a lot of inner turmoil and he stayed through it all a little in the sky is falling like he shouldn't have any doubt because he framed an ultrasound or he showed up to support you that's not the point he already testified that he did it. There's a lot at stake here. If he's not the father, it would mean she's been lying this entire time. And even if he is the father, it doesn't mean she wasn't cheating on it. R the Fox. I really hope that they figure out that they don't have to stay together just because they have a kid together. It's just going to cause more chaos for the child who's gonna have to grow up around spite and hate and it's not gonna be fair to her. Okay, so no one can tell if she actually cheated or not, but if she did, it's kind of a shame that she's not comfortable and she's too scared to tell the truth when it really matters. Anyway, on to the next case. Betrayal is the theme of this case as the plaintiff comes to court to help to prove to the defendant that her child is his. It starts with the plaintiff having a relationship with the defendant and conceiving a child with him. But then her best friend of sixth grade went behind her back to marry and have a child um, bum, bum, with the same guy. Scandal. Mrs. Matthews was once your best friend since sixth grade, but then you told her you were pregnant by Mr. Matthews and she immediately conceived a child with him and then married him. This had not known quite extensively for sleeping around. Therefore, Mr. Matthews has his concerns about being the son's biological father. He wants to sever his relationship with her. So at first, you were I in a relationship. Yes, but she was at the house where we slept together at. And so she knew you were in- Okay, so she acknowledged that that was their only encounter. He then went to her best buddy after that. If the connection she had with them was that superficial, is it accurate to state that she was betrayed? Well, there's a reason people put a band sign on their friend's ex, even if it's just a sexual encounter. Me and, me and my wife been best friends before that. Your Honor, he said they was cousins because he had another girlfriend at the house where they was at. If that's true, that shows why she never thought she was a threat and got caught off guard. That was one heck of a move. She must have been so ignorant about the whole thing. That still counts as a betrayal. So why today are you so convinced that he's the father? It's been times where she, uh, can you take me here? Can you take, it's always been about money, finances. She's a gold digger. So wait, now she's a gold digger? She did admit to sleeping with other guys, but believes the pregnancy has to be his. He claimed that he never knew about that, so he's got no reason to believe anything she says. Here's another reason he has doubts. If somebody's saying they having your, I'm supposed to be the father, you gonna have them witness to be at the birth. Why, why, why ain't she telling me, okay? How am I gonna... supposed to call him and tell him? Her ex-best friend had a lot to say. She confessed that she slept with Mr. James as a mistake. 
However, things took a turn after that. Isn't that how they always start? As the mistake? <laughs> I don't believe that one bit. How about you? I didn't intend to fall in love, have a baby, and, and marry James. That was not my intention at all, and to hurt my best friend. Yeah, but she has all this going on, and she was my everything. Terry was my heart. I was there for Terry through all her stuff, and no I matter what. Her. So she still betrayed her dearest friend, regardless of this. She not only had sex with him, but also got married to him. She's currently on trial, denying having a child with the same man who betrayed her. That's just disgusting and chilly. So what type of friend is that? No matter what I did and what I did wrong, she was supposed to have my back no matter what. And she still And I was, and him. I was always there. And to this day, I still, I, and what she don't understand, I and still- It got confusing when Mr. Matthews admitted to getting both of them pregnant at the same time. That must have been really wild and maybe even intentional. Sadna, your best friend, what did you think? To tell you the truth, Your Honor, and I told her straight up, you know what? You can have that, because I never wanted him. Yeah, so what was the big deal? Okay, so like, if she doesn't want him, what's the big deal? It's either she didn't mean that, or she just doesn't want her friend having a relationship with him. She's demanding loyalty, and feelings trump loyalty sometimes. That's not too much to ask, unfortunately. We call it ask for my son. That's not I true. have to call and ask James, do he want his son? Otherwise, he don't see my son unless he goes to his mama house. That ain't, that ain't true. She revealed that her son is growing up and he's starting to ask some questions. When your kid starts to ask questions, that's when you get desperate. But it's really sad the boy's got to go through all of this. And it's bad when a four-year-old can come to you and say, Mama, why my daddy don't want me? That doesn't make sense. Well, obviously, He's an innocent child. He didn't do nothing to James. They really need to learn how to get along for the sake of their son. For them to do so, he's got to accept that he's the biological father, and that's why they're in court. This recycle was the 15th. There's no way possible it could be pointing to me. Being a woman and knowing a little bit about that biology, that you out of the clear. <laughs> when the kid was born, it was revealed that he made some promises that he couldn't keep. Our guy here probably got carried away by the miracle of childbirth. Don't make promises you can't keep, buddy. All you're doing is breaking hearts. He was sitting there watching him, looking at him sleep, all this. Then he told me himself, Portia, I'm going to take care of my baby, and I'll call myself and put on my cell phone child support, which my mama dialed the child support number. James talked to them himself. All right, so he also voluntarily signed the birth certificate and put himself on child support. I mean, that's commendable, shows he's a responsible guy, at least to a point. But if you're gonna turn around and deny all that, then maybe don't do something so stupid. Instead of getting with Terry, then all of a sudden, you got some oh, he don't want to pay child support. So why is, why is oh, thing so let me ask Only you something. two of my kids got different daddy. Something. The other four guys are all the same daddy while you're trying to put somebody on spot. How old but are you Joe, with that many children? It don't matter. What I got. You don't take you care of them. Okay, well, needless to say, he denied all of that. They got into an argument about it, prompting Judge Lauren Lake to ask for some order. The whole thing is just a giant mess. Listen, he's I'm mad at the not. fact that I don't want him and never no, have won him. No, I don't, I don't want you to do nothing okay. because you never have. Oh. I've been having Jamari by myself and I'm going to keep having him by what myself. To me, his doubts seem valid since she was sleeping with two other guys at the time too. Judge Lauren Lake pointed that out to her, and she had nothing to say to that. So, let's check out those results. You are the father. Right. Thank you. Right. I told you. I hate you. I promise. Throughout the case, it's pretty clear that the plaintiff was more hurt about the betrayal than the man rejecting her child. This is more of a case between her and her best friend. He's just the intermediary. But they have to figure out a way to make this work so the kid will grow up around loving people who've learned to forgive one another.